How are you, Ryan? How are you? I'm good. It's nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Hey, congratulations on June Associate Spotlight. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? What brought you to Adopio? Yeah, yeah. So I was I actually worked over at uh, Central Baptist College. I was over there for about nine and a half years, and I had recommended uh, Adafio. Randy Powell came and met with me, and I told him my concerns, like what was going on, and I wanted more of like a partnership. And then we met with um, our leadership, and Randy did a great job of presenting it. And then they decided to go ahead and take my suggestion. So we went with Adafio, and we did a whole entire server room refresh. And so I got to meet Paul Peterson and Matt and Randy. And a little over a year after that, I put in a resume with Adafio and came over. Because I told people, I was like, if I was ever going to work anywhere else, I'd probably be at Adafio. And people were like, where do you recommend? I'm like, should apply at Adafio. So I came over. It was really interesting because I came over from the client side. So I, I know both sides now. And so... Uh, I think it gives me a little bit of a unique perspective into Adafio, but it's much different than our other MSP. You know, it was much more of a partnership, and I got to see you know the team on a regular basis, and they come by and see how I was doing. Like Paul stopped by several times, just checked in, said hey. There's a, there's a high level of a touch point of being on site and available and and receptive and becoming that that valued partner that Kenny always strives to want to achieve. So prior to working at Adafio. You you obviously had a an idea of what we did and who we were. What were some of the things that that made you want to bring them on as an MSP for the company you were working at? We were looking at uh, different different bids really for the server room, and mm -hmm. I like the one that Adolfo proposed in that situation. Uh, but really, after that, it was more so getting to know the guys. But we had an old file share was our last thing to move over. And in the middle of moving, of course, it crashed. But Paul and Matt and I, we did a lot of stuff to try to get it recovered. But in that instance, just seeing the dedication and the drive of the of the team, and it was. And I went to my, I went to my VP, you know, I said, hey, here's what happened. Here's what we're doing. And we just felt like a team. Just seeing that partnership. Yeah. there and then being there i think matt ended up coming up that night and working on it i mean there was a lot of late hours and then when we did the server room refresh we also did a new firewall jacob came over i want to say about 5 30 in the afternoon and about 4 a.m i got a phone call they stayed a long time working overnight to get us going so we're really part of us it was what it felt yeah. like that dedication and commitment that really does go far and that level of trust and knowing that there's no pointing fingers or trying to place the blame game that never really is very successful. Um, what is your title? Adolfo, it is a system engineer over here at Conway Regional and I'm the information system manager. How long have you been at Conway Regional? Second year at Adolfo in July, and I've been at Conway Regional about three or four days after I started at Adolfo, so about two years what, ago. What drew you to this profession? Uh, probably three, four, I got a Nintendo, you know, started playing video games and just really liked, liked technology. And then probably when I was a teenager is when really when home computers started becoming a norm, uh, given my age away here, and I just loved it. And so I really got to tinkering with it. I had to upgrade a processor to play a game I wanted to play, and it actually went well, surprisingly. Uh, and I just started learning and, and, and tinkering, and I really just decided that's what I wanted to do. If you find the, the interests of a child and then you observe what they're what they do, whether it be playing with puzzles or doing art or tinkering with gadgets and taking them apart or whatever. That usually is a sign of what they might do when they get older. Yeah. For those that are interested in this type of career path, what is some advice that you would give students and those interested in possibly recareering into technology? Sure. I think uh, one of the things is that, that people skills is a very important thing to have. You know, I think back in probably the early days, you had a lot of people that didn't have people skills and, you know, the old lived in the dungeon and did the yeah. work. But, yeah. but but these days, you know, we're really, you're making a lot of decisions within a company, whether you're part of a team or a group, there's a lot of technology needs that come and you have to be able to have good people skills for that and just day-to-day -day interactions. Because one of the things is, you know, a lot of times, if you're, especially if you're, you're working on the front lines, you're seeing people at their most stressed during the day and something they need to do to do their job isn't working and they don't know what to do to fix it. So when they call or text in or you get there, having a good attitude and be able to, to communicate with them and just kind of talk to them. A lot of times it just diffuses the situation. They feel better while you resolve the problem. Also, I think you have to be really good at, you know, multitasking, handling a lot of things coming in. Uh, technology as a whole right now it actually is pretty easy to get a job in. But I think cybersecurity is probably the, the biggest opportunity. Yeah. yeah, it was already edging to be a hot spot. And now I think it's even just it's exponentially grown since the whole COVID and working mm -hmm. and having to try to stay safe, secure, while still being able to do your job productively. Adafio 
engineers are like technology therapists, <laughs> you know, and I've always used the term IT with EQ because they, they know all of the complexities. They're super smart, but you also are able to provide the information in a very relatable and approachable manner where it's accessible to those that find it complex and frustrating. I do see that in most of the, from the people that I've met, there's just this, this, this true sincerity of wanting to be helpful. Yeah. I know that we've kind of already dabbled in telling me about yourself and then what drew you to this profession. It's another question that you, it's like, do you have any favorite quote? Yeah. So I think one of my favorite quotes is uh, train people so that they can leave, treat them so that they won't. I was a director over at CBC and I think, I think it's important, uh, especially when you're training up people and you have staff to make sure that you do, you, you, you treat them right and you train them well. And so it's one of my favorite quotes that's out there. I think it was the CEO of was it Virgin Airlines, I think is who said that. Yeah, I don't remember. Richard Branson. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's his quote. Right. So. Ed, is there anything that you wish you could see more of or how you'd like to develop your skills? I think uh, Davi does a really good job in that. Kevin and I have actually talked about uh, some conferences and stuff to look at going. Of course, uh, we were planning some things this year. Of course, with COVID uh, hit, you know, put some delays in that. But overall, no, I know when I came in, I think Matt was actually my, my mentor. And so he helped a lot with getting me trained up. I uh, met both Kimmy and Keith. I've uh, had lunch uh, personally with both of those, which is amazing. Kimmy, with the COVID-19 thing, coming from where I came from, it was amazing to actually see the leadership take a step back and look and say, okay, here's what's coming. Let's go ahead and do preparation, basically planning for the worst and hoping for the best. And so that was really amazing to see. And I know it was a hard message to deliver, uh, but I think it was the right message to deliver. But I think that was the right move. And coming from where I came from, you didn't necessarily see that. It would have been more reactionary. Everyone says it, but Keith is just one of the most genuinely, sincerely, that I've ever met. I've got to sit down and have, a, have we had a really good lunch, um, probably six months, maybe a little longer than that. And it was, it was really good. Uh, he's just a wonderful, wonderful person. So yeah. Thank you for sharing. That's, that's really encouraging. I love to hear those stories. What do you do in your free time? So uh, not only is technology my job, but it's really my hobby too. So of course I still play video games a lot, but built a house last year and actually wired it with networking and put servers in it. And so I just kind of tinker all the time with different things. And uh, my friends and I hang out online because you don't have a lot of opportunity to that in person right. right now, but, uh, and then just messing around with, with new tech at home and uh, enjoy movies as well, but it's kind of just a homebody and enjoy technology for the most part. So you built a house and you've got all the network and technology. Like, tell me what you've done to, are you able to adjust your thermostat when you're not there? And do you know who's at your door when you're not there? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So uh, I got, I got, I did all smart lights in the house. So, uh, and smart locks and smart thermostat, uh, smart garage door opener. I think I'm missing something in there, but yeah. So basically when I come home now, I can open the garage door. The, uh, the big garage lift, the inside garage door into the house will actually unlock and the lights that are right in that area automatically come on and the AC comes on as I'm going home. And I get inside and after I think a minute, it'll turn the light off and lock the door. I would say that this is a, is this something that we provide companies? <laughs> <laughs> Could be, could be. I know they, they do actually have some software that's really advanced that some people do install. And the other thing is nice to be able to check the doors. You know, I, I'm habitually like, did I lock that door? You know, and I can get back up. So it's nice to, I can just ask Siri, the door's locked. And she's like, all the doors are locked. I'm like, okay, I can go to sleep now. So. Wow, that is really fascinating. As you know, Adafio continues to grow and there's a lot of new faces. And that's just right. to be able to not only get to know you, but then your personality. And I think it really... Um, shines when you have a chance to talk to him in person. <laughs> well, Ryan, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you for your time. Thank you. You have a good day. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.